What is going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today we're going to talk to you on VinFast. I want to go over some of the current data points, what's been coming up from the company, and whether right now is a time to buy or not. Before I get into any of that, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I always greatly appreciate it. And with that said, let's get right to it. So based on Friday, it did go down 5.45%, a new 52-week and all-time low of $5.25. As far as volume, 4.7 million shares being traded, 4.9 is the average. And when it comes to their volume, it, most of that did actually originate from short so i'll give you an overview of that in a second at the time of doing this video there has been no recent sec filing so last being august the 31st but there was news that recently did come out yesterday and that was this so vinfast enters into standby equity subscription agreement of up to 1 billion with yorkville advisors so once again i think this is very good for any company to have access to additional funding just for the future because you never know what that might entail but if we do zoom out and look at what they already do have so it looks like they have roughly around 1 billion in grants and that is from the chairman and over and above that they do have 500 million in non-refundable grants and also an additional 1 billion in loans from vin group so we already do know that they have a big brother that has tons of money and this is why i've said on previous videos that vinfast gives me a hybrid kind of vibe a little bit so they kind of have the expansion that polestar has but at the same time they have a big brother that has very big pockets similar to lucid so once again i think that this is good but why are they not going to big brother for additional funding rather going to yorkville advisors i don't know too much about them but based on this tweet right here salvatore pellella who is the ceo of micromobility so mcom for him to tweet saying congratulations to our financial partner yorkville on closing a significant shares deal with vinfast this is a huge milestone for him to tweet this that just brings a massive red flag up for me um, anything that this individual touches is just so far going to burn to the ground especially micro mobility in among itself most likely uh, we'll get the extension from the nasdaq but they'll probably file bankruptcy sooner rather than later that's just my own opinion not a financial advisor of course but still the fact that he even tweeted this that makes me question this um, in my opinion and so once again i think it's good to have access for additional funding but why are they not going to big brother rather than yorkville advisors and also on a side note this is something that's just been kind of rather bothering me is I frequently go on to VinFast's website just to look at PR because sometimes it's not in sync. They sometimes have news that's not on the mainstream media, vice versa. So oddly under VinFast's American website, it does show the last news being October the 11th. And that is where the VinFast chairman donates a battery company to VinFast, as crazy as that sounds. Um, so once again, I think that's good, this news, but the fact that it's not in sync is a red flag and even on vinfast's website like other than october the 11th it shows the last news being march the 10th and we already do know that is not true because i cover a lot of this and a lot of which i can refer to vinfast's official website so the fact that they are deleting news is very questionable in my opinion so I think there's just a lot of red flags and still even at this stage a lot of people are starting to look at the multiples still once again to see if vinfast is a good deal or not and at this current price the ps ratio is at 13.6 and the future is 5.5 so even in comparison to a lot of other evs it is still rather expensive and overvalued so it does need to pull back down probably i'd say at least at a bare minimum to around 6x and that's the current so what does that mean for the stock price that it does need to go down probably by more than another 50 percent and this is something i did signal over my last video i think when it was around 12 i said that based on where it was at it was finding a good support that seems to have allured a lot of buyers but still based on the ratio it does need to pull back down to probably around i did say at the time maybe around four dollars uh, around that range but obviously if it's going to take a 50 plus maybe uh, hit right now it might be taking it to the three dollar range which is kind of crazy if you think about it that it was at 93 dollars at one time so that's kind of the high around here so once again i do feel that potentially based on the metrics itself that it does need to pull back down 
But oddly enough, like I said, when I first started covering VinFast, a lot of people aren't really forecasting the future as what they should be. So even though on the current state of what it produces, it's considered overvalued, a lot of people are thinking about the future because they can produce up to 350,000 vehicles a year. So based on their initial targets of 50 to 60, like they can definitely surpass that if they didn't have such a bad first half of the quarter. One thing to note though, they actually did get their very first analyst rating, and that was from Chardhan Capital Markets. I've never heard of them before, but they did initiate a rating, a buy rating, and a target of $11. So once again, that's kind of good. It did come in on October the 10th. So yeah, kind of interesting when it comes down to that. I was waiting for an analyst to really look at VinFast, and yeah, I don't believe it actually did come in on October the 10th. Maybe they just retro kind of inputted it as of that date, because I've been double checking since then and nothing. But still, regardless, whatever, it's still a fairly good thing. Let's go over some of the options activity though. So based on Friday, $637,000 in calls being purchased versus 4.9 million inputs. So based on this, a lot of people are anticipating for it to trend down. And then more specific information, so this is all the call options as uh, looking at the open interest it does anticipate that it'll be most likely above the six dollar range by november the third so take that from what you will so it doesn't really have that high of a risk versus return right now and vice versa if you are looking at puts it is anticipated to be roughly around sub five dollars by the end of next week as well. So as far as right now, I think it's kind of evenly divided uh, somewhat. And when it comes down to VinFast and what's been really moving it up and down, it's been shorts and just usually looking at options activity. Although options activity does not move the stock price, it is just merely a sentiment. A lot of people have been looking at this on where things might be going. And just to quickly, before I touch on shorts and other fun stuff, looking on the technicals with it at $5.38, it is between this S2 and this S1. So $4.51 is that basically line in the sand, very strong support level for VinFast. And so based on that, it is not necessarily where I would say it should be based on the multiples, of course. But once again, if it does get to around that 450 range, I feel like maybe the market might be accepting of it and where a lot of value investors might be coming in, assuming the market doesn't continue its massive sell off. But as far as moving on and just talking on shorts for a second, because shorts have been really ingrained in VinFast. And I think this is why it did gain a lot of popularity over the last little bit and why people have been saying that this could be a squeeze play. And that's because of the low float, of course. But short score is 84. Utilization is 96.02. And shorts did return 600,000 shares on Friday. And so this is where things get very interesting. So 17.77% of the free float is being shorted. 5.73 million shares overall are being shorted. Cost to borrow average is very high. So 303.11%. And as far as just looking at this, the interactive broker short availability, there hasn't been that much ammunition available to shorts so this is probably why they are returning some shares and freeing up room so they could maybe double down in the future but as of right now it does indicate that there's around 200,000 shares available to be shorted and just the way I interpret this information the fact that they did return on a red day shows that they feel that it's unjustified and obviously a new 52 week and all-time low maybe wasn't or shouldn't have been in the cards for VinFast once again this is just how I'm interpreting the data, but even if you look at the overall volume, so borrowed shares and what was returned, like that, that's basically like almost 70% of the daily volume. So 4.7 million shares being traded overall. So shorts have are just completely ingrained in VinFast. So that's one thing that obviously isn't necessarily the best. Just a lot of long investors don't see any value in VinFast. So once again, that's just my own interpretation. But as far as whether right now is a time to buy, I would say no until essentially it does get to maybe around this range that I did kind of point to. 
around this S2, so the 450. So that's just my own opinion, of course, not a financial advisor. And my very first video, I think it was around $13, I actually did say that it needs to get to around the five to $7 range. And obviously there's been so much moving parts. We didn't have the Q3, Q2 earnings at that stage, but still from the get go, it's just not necessarily been a screaming buying opportunity. Everyone knows it has a big brother behind it, but other than that though, it's not really producing anything. So it does mean that it's going to be another lucid equivalent that's just going to continue to bleed money time and time again. So once again, VinFast might be a buy in the foreseeable future once they get their stuff together, start to ramp up. I don't feel that they're going to hit their annual targets, my own opinion, of course, but you never know. So let me know your thoughts on VinFast in the comments below. Have you been buying, selling, holding? What have you been doing with VinFast? In my case, I did sell some puts and that was for December. And so that was around the $7 range. I even did close that because look at the stock price. Price. It's at $5 right now. That is crazy. I would have been at a pretty significant loss. So luckily enough, I caught it in time. I think it, I did it around the $8 range. But still, like this has been a crazy falling knife over the last little bit. But still, um, obviously, you can make money from anything, essentially, if it does get hit and uh, been down enough. So once again, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. I always greatly appreciate that. And even though VinFast goes up, down, sideways, all over the place, Take advantage of these promos I've been sharing with you with Mumu. Link in the description below and also the comments. Sign up for an account with Mumu, throw $100 at it, and you get five free stocks. Each stock is valued up to $2,000. So take advantage of this. Link in the description below and also the comments. With all of that said, I appreciate all of you watching.